grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We sing our first hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down the weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, so weary. spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image. To the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. We sing canticle number seven, Jesus, Saviour of the world. Jesus, Saviour of the world, may we all your mercy see. By your cross and life lay down, you have set your people free. Come 
unto us with healing power, loose us from captivity, and at our final hour, give your people liberty. Jesus, Savior, Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming back here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go. Call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You're right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, 
who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labour. Others have laboured, and you have entered into their labour. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, that was a long reading, wasn't it? We heard the story of Jesus meeting a woman whose name we don't know, but we do know her identity. Our identity is that of being an outcast. Fresh from his encounter with Nicodemus in Jerusalem, Jesus had caught wind that the Pharisees were after him, so he decided to return to the Galilean countryside. Now the most direct path would take them through Samaria, but Jews rarely took that route. Instead, they'd opt to go several days out of their way by heading east to Jericho, skirting along the Jordan Valley, and then entering Galilee from the southeast. They did this for two reasons. First, it wasn't uncommon for Samaritan bandits to attack Jew Jewish pilgrims along the road. And secondly, because first century Jews regarded Samaritans as the worst kind of outcasts. They were ethnically outcast as unclean half-bloods who had been left behind during the Babylonian exile and intermarried with non-Jews. The Samaritans were also religiously outcast because they dared to suggest that God didn't reside in the temple in Jerusalem, but rather in their temple on Mount Gerizim. Therefore, generally speaking, it was better for proper Jews to avoid the region of Samaria altogether. For some reason though, on this trip northwards, John tells us that Jesus had to go through Samaria. And it was one day, about noon, Jesus and his disciples entered the town of Sychar, and Jesus took some time to rest at Jacob's well while his disciples went off in search of food and drink. After a few minutes, there came a woman, a Samaritan woman, to draw water from the well. Not at the usual time, but in the heat of the day, presumably when it was going to be quiet. Now while it's true that the Samaritans weren't particularly nice to the Jews, it's perhaps more true that the Jews were not nice to the Samaritans. So as this woman came to the well, all alone, in the heat of the day, so as to avoid the chatter of all the other women in town, her heart must have sank all the way to the tips of her toes as she noticed this man, this Jewish man, resting by the well. How awkward. Here she was, 
minding her own business, when all of a sudden she once again found herself playing the role of outcast. You see, even among her own people, this woman was something of an outcast because of her past that may or may not have been her own fault. She'd been married five times and was now living with a man who wasn't her husband. In a world where women were nothing more than the property of their husbands, it probably doesn't mean she was an adulterer or a serial monogamist, but rather a victim of her own culture. John doesn't give us much detail about this woman's life, other than what Jesus says about her. You've had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. But in a culture where the point of womanhood was to produce children, preferably boys, and where a man could divorce his wife simply by note of dismissal saying, I divorce you, it seems reasonable to assume that this woman, perhaps, was unable to bear children, and has been cast off by at least a few of those five husbands. Well, perhaps a few others, and probably her most recent husband, could have died. What we can be sure of is that she's very much the talk around town. Whether it's out of pity, or gossip, or disdain, or a mixture of all three. And so this woman comes to the well in the heat of the day to quietly draw water without being seen or noticed. With her head down, hoping to avoid eye contact with the Jewish man at the well, the woman begins to lower her bucket. When Jesus clears his throat and says, <coughs> May I have a drink? And with that, a relationship is born. And a life is changed, transformed. It begins with a simple question, based in the universal need for water, but it quickly goes much deeper. The woman seems just as taken aback by the fact that Jesus would ask her for a drink at all as she is that he didn't demand it from her. As the conversation unfolds, the woman's eyes are slowly open. Now, one thing we can be sure about, she's no fool. This woman knows the history of her tradition and the centuries-old arguments between the Samaritans and the Jews. And as is the case for most of us who find ourselves outcast, she's waiting, longing for a better life to come along. After Jesus had revealed that he knew her pain and her suffering, she confesses her hope to him. I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Or as we might say in modern language, he will give us the final word. When the Messiah came, for this woman and for all of us who have been outcasts, it wasn't to help us understand nuclear physics or explain the process of evolution, but to be for us God's word of salvation, the totality of God's dream for his creation. And Jesus reveals to the woman that he is that final word in a simple two-word phrase. In Greek, ego eimi, translated I am. I am he. I am is the name that God called himself when Moses asked him for a name at the burning bush. I am is the name so holy that even now faithful Jews won't speak it in Hebrew. I am is the identity of the one who came to bring about healing, restoration and redemption in the world. I am is the first and final word for Jews, for Samaritans, for people the world over. But Jesus gave the doubly outcast woman at the well the final word of hope by engaging with her as a human being who is worthy of love and attention. 
And in that encounter, that brief encounter, he changes an identity from outcast to a beloved child who belongs to the kingdom of God. And how often does Jesus do that again and again and again in his ministry? The blind beggar becomes whole when Jesus heals his sight and he welcomes him into the kingdom. The lepers are made clean by the touch of Jesus and are invited into the kingdom of God. To this very day, Jesus continues to heal, restore, make whole and welcome the outcast. It makes no difference if we don't wear the right shoes or don't have the right job or don't have our anxiety under control or still struggle with addictions or can't have children or can't find the one. In Christ, our identity is not that of outcast, but rather we are beloved children invited into God's kingdom with open arms and offer the cool drink of living water, God's spirit and eternal life. Thanks be to God. And so let us affirm our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have made us for yourself and for your love. May we seek your presence and desire to give our lives and our love in response to you. Lord, we pray for your church. Pray that your presence in the world may be revealed through us. May we never be satisfied with words without content, with actions without love, with buildings that do not convey your presence. Lord, fill us and make us a holy people, a fulfilled people, and a people who go out and serve. Bless your church, that it may grow in outreach, in holiness, and in number. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us a wonderful world. May we not spoil it through greed or lack of respect. We remember all who suffer from hunger and thirst. We pray for all who do not have proper, clean water supplies, or have to, have to walk miles to get water. We pray also for all in the consumer society who try to fill their lives with things and are never satisfied. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask your blessing upon our loved ones our families and friends, and all those whose lives touch ours day by day. We remember before you all you who are lonely, all who are failing in health or strength, and all who are fearful for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, we thank you for the joy and freedom that you give to our lives. Hear us as we remember all who are ill, at home or in hospital, and those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in the power of your Spirit, you renew and refresh us. We pray for all who are departed from us, that they may rejoice in the fullness of life eternal. And so to you, O God, and to your love, we commit this world, our loved ones and ourselves, now and for eternity. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's offer ourselves afresh in God's service as we say together. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross, we meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing our second hymn, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Christ 
give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.